Welcome to Between Rounds, where we dive deep into the lives of extraordinary martial artists. Today, we are thrilled to welcome Sifu Ariel Ty Wesley. With over three decades of experience, Sifu Wesley is not just an accomplished fighter, but a respected coach and mentor. As a level 10 instructor in traditional Wing Chun, a practitioner of JKD concepts and Filipino martial arts, and a multi-weight class full contact champion, his journey is nothing short of inspiring. He's here to share insights from his extensive career, his philosophy on martial arts, and how his passion led him to co-own and lead EP Martial Arts. Join us as we explore the rich tapestry of his life and career in this enlightening conversation. Hey everybody, welcome to another segment of Between Rounds. This is a very special guest I have with me today. Uh, he's a personal friend. He also is my coach as well. He is the co-owner and head instructor at EP Martial Arts and has been teaching martial arts for over 30 years. He is a level 10 instructor in traditional Wing Chun. He also trained in JKD concepts and Filipino martial arts under the well-respected Sifu Keith Allen. And he is a former New England full contact champion in three weight classes. And most recently, he won a gold in jiu-jitsu competition. And last year, he coached yours truly in my very first exhibition boxing <laughs> fight. I am talking about my main man, Coach Sifu Ty Wesley. Coach, how are you? All right, Mike. Good to see you, man. Good to see you, brother. And not everybody gets this, but you're going to get this. You get the djembe introduction, my man. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you get the djembe, bro. I love it. <laughs> not everybody gets that. You are the first. All right. Appreciate so, it. The djembe. Djembe intro. So tell me, my man, give me a little, give me a little history on on your martial arts journey. Give give the audience a little insight on on you know what's led you to where you are today at EP Martial Arts. So um, you know, I started like typical people my age. I started watching you know Bruce Lee movies and the old kung fu movies, and I started doing you know backyard kung fu with just local. <laughs> you know, guys who didn't have schools and, mm -hmm. you know, and then I finally, you know, I would, I was like 14 years old and I would like get any books or any magazine that I could get. And me and my cousin would meet each other, you know, at the park and go spar and beat each other up. Didn't know what we were doing. But then I was about 17, 18. I finally took a real martial arts class. I met this guy, Rob Lowell. Okay. Sifu Ram out of Massachusetts somewhere, and he introduced me to Wing Chun. And I trained with him for a little while, and then I met my Sifu, uh, my current Sifu now. Well, this is the one, well, before that. All right. I met we Sifu got Saladin. We're really so challenging the memory, know. my man. We're challenging. Yeah, how I know. I got to think back to these. <laughs> but Saladin after that. And he introduced me to traditional Wing Chun. And that's the style I stuck with since then. And I've been doing that for, oh, man, back in the 80s. And he actually had a school. And I was, you know, getting uh, belted and things like that. He actually had a, an actual school. And from hit, from there, I met Keith Allen, my mm -hmm. Jeet Do instructor. And, you know, Jeet Do, they're always talking about no way as a way, try other things and all that. And right. he always very, told very, me. Very Bruce Lee, right? That was his art. Yeah. And he was um, very into, um, you know, you need to spar and you need to spar with boxes. Mm -hmm. So that's how you can tell if your your stuff is real. You know, go start with, spar with some boxes and all that. So I was like, okay. And I, I did that, and that's why I met Charlie, my kickboxing coach. And uh, oh yeah, I got some sparring there, you know. Uh, and then you, you and I both have that connection. We, yeah, we both met you know, at Charlie's gym. I know, you I know, know, that I know experience, exactly what yep. you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, the Charlie experience. Yep. <laughs> God rest his soul, Charlie Sam Palace. But um, yeah, that guy. I went, so I went. I started sparring with him, and he he said, "You know how to kick, so you just do kickboxing." Mm -hmm. And then, you know, 
months of doing that, I was, you know, I'm getting beat up anyway. So I was like, what the hell? I might as well do some tournaments. Might as well get some trophies for it. <laughs> so I did. That's how I started competing in kickboxing. So I actually was doing that at the same time that I was taking Jukado with Keith. Mm. Keith and I opened up uh, our first uh, studio. And um, yeah, that's how that got started. So I was then the kickboxing, I seen. Uh, I seen Sanda somewhere. I seen Kung Lee mm-hmm. doing Chinese kickboxing, and that had uh, wrestling, kickboxing, throwing, and it's kung fu. I was like, "Wow, this is all the stuff I like. This is this is my stuff." Because I did wrestling too in high school. And and, and tell and tell the audience about oh. Sanda because Sanda is very unique. You don't see Sanda around these parts a lot, mm-hmm. correct? Right. Yeah. So. And, um, yeah, because I like kickboxing. It's very cool. Cause I'm like, all right, this is full contact. You're really doing stuff. Mm-hmm. But there's no there's no wrestling, no throwing in it. So I mm-hmm. liked wrestling, but I was like, but there's no striking in it. So it had its – and I liked the Wing Chun, but it's not full contact. So when I seen Sun, I was like, whoa, there it is. It's all my stuff this right there. You. The things this is, I, your, this I, is made I, yeah. for you. And I watched a few, you know, tournaments on TV. I knew there was schools in Boston. Mm-hmm. They had the Boston Kung Fu Academy. Uh, you know, those guys were, do- were doing it. Um, so I looked in an ad. I watched them on TV. And there still was none around here. I was like, all right, so I got to do it. I got to make my own school. And I just started, you know, teaching. And I got into some competitions myself. And, uh you know, it. I just been doing it ever since. You know, now since then I've trained, man, several men and women in uh, championships as well as you know local and national titles. And and we every year we've been keeping up with it. We go down to Baltimore. We do a uh, uh, Sanda yeah, Lo- Lo- Chai Chai right? tournament. Yeah, Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 Excellent. And uh. Yeah, man, that's been my my journey, and but that was yeah, the the Sanda or Sancho, whatever. I just kind of fell in love with that, and that's been my main thing ever are since. You, are you the still the only school in Rhode Island that does it, or do other schools now uh, do Sanda? No, no, no. Matter of fact, a buddy that you that you met, my man Silas. 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 Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they do Sanda over there. They're like similar to us. They're so cool. They have uh yeah, they do Sanda, they do it over there, you know, it's very similar to us. So we as soon as I met him, like we became fast friends quick. Mm. And we we have uh schools, we call it our sister school. Mm. Cause we we go over there and train with them sometime. They come over here with us. We've done uh inter school tournaments. Uh, so yeah, we're very tight with them because they're they're very similar. So that's the other known one here, and there's another one in um, is it Boston? And his actual name is Ty too. There's another guy, oh, no Sifu okay. Ty. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if his first name is Tyler or whatever, but it's act, but he calls himself Ty too, and he does Sanda too. So we're you actually thinking about. Yeah, we talked about it, but it was COVID was going on, mm. you know, but we've been planning on getting together and maybe we can set up some kind of into school tournament thing or something like that. Yeah. It's in the be, works. That'd be amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. And, and I know that that's something at EP Martial Arts that, you know, you take a lot of pride in. You you have people there that actually compete to fight and do very well in local tournaments and also um afar as well as you mentioned in baltimore yeah yeah we're trying to keep it up um the one in baltimore is a little different state. it's still science sound it's still um full contact kung fu mm-hmm. so you're punching kicking and throwing that's the hallmark of you know full contact chinese martial arts but theirs is a, a little different like you have to wear um the full uniform Mm. As opposed to the just boxing gloves and uh, boxing headgear stuff, but still, it's in the tradition of Sanda. It's still the same thing, and that tournament is very uh, 
they're reliable. They're always there. They're always on time. It's they're always so we can depend on them. So we've been doing that over actually over ten years this year. Wow. We've been wow. going there. Yep. And tell me what what makes EP martial arts unique? So what's unique about us? Well, we're very uh we're family oriented. My partner, Bad Axelrod, his son, uh Max, is actually my first uh full contact student. Oh, and wow. his brother all fought with us. Yes, so his kids were my students in the beginning. So and and now that was like oh god, he started he was fifteen and now Max is He's 28, 25. and he's been competing ever since. Now, he does everything. He, he just competed with us yesterday in jiu-jitsu. He does I judo, saw. does jiu-jitsu. Yep. Yeah. I know he's big into the judo. So, and, and, and we got to mention, we got to we gotta put something out there. Your daughter, Tyra, double gold. Yep. I want everybody to know that. Yep. The grappling competition. Yep. Congrats to her. Yep. So we're keeping it in the family. Yep. yep. And uh, a lot of the guys uh, and girls who train there, they're all their family members come. So, yeah, it's very family oriented. And we have something for everybody. We do, if you want to compete, if you want to do, you know, combat sports or you want to do self-defense, uh, we have it all. We got striking, grappling, just self-defense. You got, like, uh, Krav Maga. Mm -hmm. uh, we got Wing Chun, a traditional art. So we, we got something for everybody, you know. Is it truly a mixed martial arts school? How well, out of the, the multiple disciplines that you've trained in, which one do you see as the best self-defense art, or are they all equal, or does it really depend? Well, it's all, um, there is no one in my opinion it's all because everybody's individual mm -hmm. you know you have to find your way they could all be everyone that i just mentioned or even i can think would be great in self-defense and could be great uh for sport and for competition too you know mm -hmm. it just depends on what you like you know and you have to and what you're looking for out of it you know um it's, you know, what you put into it, you can get out. Is what you, you know. Have. That's what you get out. Yep. And and how hard is it for you know your average student that comes to your studio, comes to your dojo, to learn uh, sanda, for example? Would that be equal to the rest, or it depends on ability? Oh no, easy. Anybody, anybody could do it. Anybody could do it. Yep. Yep. Anybody and everybody. Yep. And you know that, that's the way I I teach too. I and we often talk about this, Bart and I. You know, sometimes we want to have all oh, this beginning students this day, advanced students this day, and you you can't. Mm -hmm. I just whoever comes in the door, that's who I treat, and that's how I've been doing it for years. Um, because you know people have different schedules. You know, maybe this advanced person can't come on Friday. They can only come on Tuesday. You know, right? What right. are you gonna do? Oh, you can't come because you're advanced. You know, you know. So, I tail my classes at least to whoever comes in the door. If all advanced people come in that day, I got something for them. If a new person comes in with it, I got something for them too. If nobody comes, I'll work out. If 20 <laughs> people come, I got something for the 20 people. So, because I know people, people might, might not realize, but but I do because I've been there and inspired. But you're still in phenomenal shape and you're still you're still kicking ass. So oh, thank really you. Good. I'm trying. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling the age. I slowed it down a little bit. But yeah, I try to make sure I jump in there at least twice a, twice a week and keep myself up to par. Well, and, and what you mentioned before, you know, I, I think that, you know, EP martial arts is, is really unique in, in that way where, you know, I think you do do a great job in tailoring things because I've been in classes where there's all different abilities, but you get a great workout because what you are, the techniques that you're teaching, you can have someone with, a, you know, a, an advanced ability also doing those techniques with someone who's more of a beginner and they can still get something out of it. Or, you know, you can have them on the bag. 
Um, so yeah. I, I, yeah. I think you know you do a great job with with tailoring that and working with whoever you have there. Yeah, and it's just um, not that I wouldn't want to do it. I just we talk about this a lot, Bart and I. Um, it's just so tough with the modern day. You know, people go to school and work and. We do too. We all we still have full time jobs, and um, you know you can only be there so many days a week, and even your other instructors can only be there so many days a week. So to say that you know beginners you only come on this day, and advanced you only come on this day, it's it's hard to do that because everybody's got these different schedules. So you just kind of gotta be ready, like I said, for anything. Whoever comes, you tailor it, tailor it to the individual mm -hmm. some things is general everybody can do you can all do a warm-up you know and then when you start getting into different techniques or different principles then you got to kind of separate people all right this is a little advanced for you so you do this you do this and you do that you know that's just that's that's the way it is that's you know is. just got to be ready ready for anybody you got you to be ready like like in real life right yeah, exactly. You ready, you sometimes you think, yeah, sometimes you think, oh, not a lot of people showing up today, and 20 people are in there. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you think, oh, there's going to be a bunch of people, and there's like one person. You, That's just, that's the way it is. You just got to roll with it and be ready. And, you know, we, we all have we all have mentors in our lives and, and people that we, we look up to. Who Who was your greatest mentor? If you had to pick one or who were a couple of them? Oh, man. Oh, God. I have so many. Well, uh, mentor. Yeah, I would have to say, of course, uh, you know, Charlie, mm -hmm. my kickboxing coach, God rest his soul. Um, he's a good mentor. Um, and uh, hmm, there's so many. I'm so like, many. Right. all right. Well, how about, how about yeah. this? Since you mentioned Charlie, and I know Charlie yeah. and trained with him for a little yeah. bit, can you give me your best Charlie story? You got a good Charlie story? Oh for my me? god! Oh yeah! <laughs> oh boy! Yes. All right. Because <laughs> he has, he had a lot of bravado and a lot of <laughs> personality. Oh, yeah. Dude, yeah. <laughs> so he, <laughs> um. All right, let me try to think of one without using profanity. Right. So that's going to be true. All right. All right. So one time, uh, oh, man. Uh, there we go. Sorry. Uh, wait, wait, wait. I, I, one I time. This one. I'm on the edge of my seat for this one. <laughs> um. Oh, yeah. He, he's got a lot. He he would always, you know, like any of us coaches, we we say what we got to say to get the person motivated. Some people, you know, you got to talk to calm and friends. some people you got to yell at. Mm -hmm. And some people, you know, you got to check their psychology to see what to give. That's what a good coach does. So mm -hmm. I was always really calm and quiet. So he used to have to, like, get me mad or something to get me, you know, get me going. So he would try to say things to get me. You go and so one time <laughs> I'm in the corner. He's like, Hey Ty, he's like, Look, see that guy over there? He's like, Listen, you're in jail. All right. And see that guy over there on the other side of the corner? He said, He just raped your mother. And now he's gonna oh, rape you. What are you gonna do? <laughs> I was like, hey. Oh, oh man. Oh, oh yeah. So so, was, so, so it was, was it was like just zero, zero to there. Yeah. There was no intermediate. Yeah. That's it. Yep, he said. He would say, "Keep on swinging." He said, "I'm gonna have a bat in this corner. If you don't stop swinging, don't come back to this corner." <laughs> like, okay, so I was more scared of him than the opponent, so we do what he said. Yeah, I, I mean, I I remember I I was just kind of kind of new, you know, and he's like, "Hey, hey, you know, uh, Patron, you want to go in the ring?" He's like, "Come on, why didn't you spar?" I never sparred, you know, ever at that point. It was a while ago. I was at this place in West Warwick and stuff. And uh, I remember, sure, you know, I'll spar. You know, he's got me against this this big guy, you know, who must have just needed somebody to beat on for the day. You know, he's a more seasoned fighter. And we were sparring. I was doing all right. And I got a boom, like a, a right, you know, when the round ended. And he came back. Yeah. I was in the corner. He's like, hey, 
Parker, you're okay. You're okay. Right. Hey, that was easy. That wasn't a good shot. He's like, hey, get it back in there. Round two. <laughs> it's like, oh my yep. God. That was said, him, what, did, what did I walk into? I was just looking for a, a place to, to learn some technique down the street. But uh but he was he was a cool guy, you know, and I and, and he was he was nice. I, I, he taught me a lot, a lot of boxing stuff, a lot of good stuff. Yeah, and he really was uh deep down, he's a kind hearted dude. He didn't always show that part, but he he was. He was a caring, kind hearted dude. But man, he was uh he was something else yeah. in that ring, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and you know what, you know what I respect too, and, and and this is you know what what I, I respect too about you guys over at EP Martial Arts is that you know with Charlie, the dues were always always affordable. You know they they were always affordable. You know it'd be like oh yep. you know hey what, what you got all right you got like you do fifty fifty bucks this month that's fine you know seventy bucks all right yeah go ahead now go go you know grab your bag and get set and 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 get things you know get things going get your wraps on everything. And, uh, you know, you guys do, you know, really affordable dues, too, at EP. So I think it's really accessible for, yeah, gotta, for everybody to for do people. it. Yep. And that's important because when I was a kid, I couldn't afford to take karate, you know, right. really. So we try to, you know, accommodate, try to work with people. I mean, you got to you got to run a business. You got to. But at the same time, you want to we try to offer you know, discounts and work with people, you know. Mm. You really got to communicate with your, your clientele, you know. Everybody's different, you know. So tell me, man, what what can we expect from EP Martial Arts going into 2024? What do you guys got planned? You and Bart? Oh, man, so much. So we're, all of our, uh, you know, our we got great competitions coming up uh, in uh, in the kickboxing in judo and the jujitsu, we got Krav Maga big seminars coming up. Mm -hmm. Wing Chun, there's some promotions going on. Uh, more wrestling. My, okay. uh, we have our catch wrestling going on. That's been continuing with Tommy. He does an excellent job. And then we got my nephew August Wesley, who's an Olympian wrestler. Yep, he's going to wow. be teaching more classes over there as well. So big things, man. All right, my man. Hey, thank you so much, Coach Ty. Hopefully, I'll be back in the gym soon. I gotta, I gotta get in shape again. But you know that I've been telling you. I told you that at the Christmas party. But yeah, so I'm we're starting. gonna get I'm there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, Mike. Thank you so much, man. This is right, awesome what you're doing. Keep up the good work. Thanks, brother. I love you. Take care. All right, right back at you, man. Be safe. As we wrap up this incredible session with Sifu Ariel Ty Wesley, it's clear that his journey through the world of martial arts is not just about the physical skills, but also about the deep wisdom and personal growth that come with it. His dedication to teaching and his passion for various martial arts forms, from Wing Chun to JKD concepts, highlight a life devoted to the pursuit of excellence. Sifu Wesley's experiences from his early days inspired by Bruce Lee movies to becoming a multi-weight class champion and a revered instructor remind us that martial arts is a journey of continuous learning and self-improvement. We thank Sifu Wesley for sharing his remarkable story and insights with us. It's been a truly enlightening conversation that not only inspires martial artists, but anyone seeking to master their craft and live with purpose. Thank you, Sifu Wesley, for joining us on Between Rounds. To our listeners, keep training, keep learning, and keep pushing the boundaries of what you believe is possible. Until next time, this is Mike Petraka for Between Rounds. If you're interested in training at East Providence Martial Arts, you can visit them at www.epmartialarts.com. To learn more, you can call 401-489-3189.